Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and uh, today we're talking about the Ascenthelt game engine. If that's not said right, I apologize, it's a made-up word, plus I'm fighting off a cold and I can barely speak anyways. So I'm going to call it Ascenthelt, and we're going to live with that. Uh, what is this? Well, this is a game engine that was previously commercial being sold on Steam that has just gone open source. Now, I should point out before we jump in, I'm not talking FOSS. This is not free open source, this is literally just open source. It's under a proprietary license on GitHub. We'll look at that in just a second. So... Senthil has been for sale on Steam for a number of years now, I think since 2010, and it used to cost about $100 a year. And I got to imagine in this day and age, especially with Unity so dominant and then open source options like Godot getting so good, selling a game engine is not an easy task. And I think that that's exactly what Ascenthal have run into here. So if you've never heard of it before, it's available at Ascenthal.com. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of details about the game engine, first off, because I can barely talk. And second, because I've actually already covered this in a video. I think I'm going to get to the point soon where I've covered every video, every engine in a video, and then I don't know what I'm going to do, actually. So hopefully that day doesn't come soon. But if you're interested in checking out Ascenthal, it is available online. And they've actually got this demo you can run directly in the browser, which by the way, you can compile your code to run in the browser, which is always kind of a nice feature. Uh, pretty straightforward. You can see just sort of what Ascenthal is kind of capable of. We've got things in here like depth of field. Uh, we can turn it on and off like so. So you got depth of field enabled now. We can zoom in and out accordingly. Uh, we've got motion blur on and off. We've got ambient occlusion. We can turn that on and off. Like so we've got bump mapping that we can turn to various different options. I can barely actually read these fonts though, which is a bit of a challenge for this. We got per pixel and per vertex material blending, and we have a fur shader that we can turn on and off. So that is uh, kind of a quick look at what Ascenthal is capable of. Obviously it's not a huge in-depth, but you can see the type of game and type of graphics fidelity it can do. We'll zoom in a bit here and you can see these guys in action. Again, in the hands-on video I do, uh, which I will link down below, you can get a better idea of the process of how this actually works but what we'll focus on next is actually the features the top level selling points of what the essential engine is all about so it runs on um, windows xbox mac ios android linux and the web uh, as you saw the web already there's a game manager with unlimited world size train and object manager multi-threaded updating rendering serialization streaming world data there's 2d and 3d pathfinding uh, you've got a full editing environment uh, looks and works the same about all platform collaborative development uh, works both online and off automatic and in background world processing drag and drop asset importing unlimited sized worlds automatic world mini map generation creating terrain height maps hand painted import from images or programmatically uh, powerful game object class system powerful uh Elements management, automatic publishing, uh, 3D model editing, bone, uh, so mesh editor, bone editor, skinning editor, animations editor, programming. It's based on the fastest industry, industry standard language C++, very clean and simple API, works with multiple IDEs, including Visual Studio Code, Xcode, NetBeans, and code editor built in for all platforms. Again, I demonstrate that in the video if you're interested in learning more. Uh, editor network interface, and then for graphics, we've got DX9, 10, 10.1, uh, and 11 support, OpenGL, GL. Yes, and WebGL, no Vulcan for those people keeping score. Uh, we've got a number of different special effects, graphical effects, a lot of the stuff that you would expect, including HDR uh, and so on. I am not sure that PBR is in there. Not 100% certain, but it does have all the graphical bells and whistles you probably expect. Uh, it's got VR support for Oculus Rift and OpenVR. So this is a full fleshed out featured game engine. I think the biggest problem that was probably going against it was the simple fact that it was commercial. You've got physics engine, both the physics engine and bullet integrated. Um, it just kind of keeps going and going. There's a GUI, a bunch of GUI objects, things like text box lists and so on. Uh, full networking support, online store support for pretty much all of the major online stores. Uh, advertising support in the form of ad mob and chart boost built in, a bunch of sound APIs. And then you get into the miscellaneous here. So this is a full functioning, capable game engine. It's been relatively obscure, and again, it's the fact that it is trying to be a proprietary engine in this day and age, and that's hard, because you are, again, you are competing against the likes of Unity, who have 100,000 times your development budget, which is definitely tricky. So what have they done? Well, they've gone open source. That's what the entire title was about. So you see here up on uh, GitHub, I will of course link to this as well. So if you want to jump in and grab the source, it is available there. One big thing I want you to be aware of though, 
is this guy. So I didn't call this FOSS. This is just open source in that the source is available. And this license is completely proprietary. So that's one of those catches. I am not a lawyer and I am uh, not even going to pretend to tell you that I went through this thoroughly. Uh, there are some limitations here. So basically it allows you to do quite a few things. You can create an unlimited number of games using the engine. You can redistribute the source code. You can make changes to the essential uh, non-exclusive worldwide and royalty free. You do not have to share any of your income. You do not have to show a logo. So all the normal gotchas, there's no revenue sharing, there's no logo, there's no anything else like that are in here, but they obviously don't want this adapted to other game engines, etc. They don't want people cannibalizing their code. And I can understand the mindset, uh, but do be aware there are some potential minefields in your limitations. So it says, may not be used for development improvement of other game engines. You may not browse the source code if you are work on improving other game engines. So in other words, if you are contributing to the Godot source code or other source codes, this says you can't see their source code. And that's dangerous because who's knows if you're going to want to work on those source codes in the future. Um, even more insanely uh, unfair is for some reason you're not allowed to use the source code for terrorism or illegal drugs, which is unfortunate. Um, actually, do be aware that gambling one is one of those things that actually could catch up to you. You may not resell or sublicense the source code. That's realistic or fair. You may not claim that you wrote the source code. Again, that is fair. You may not remove or change copyright message from the text. Uh, it is not sold to you. It is licensed to you, and they can yank your license. Um, so do be aware there are definitely uh, questions in, in the licensing terms. They're, for the most part, they're reasonable unless you are contributing or plan to contribute to another game engine, in which case stay the hell away from Essential because that license is poison to you. Uh, but to the average end user, it's, it's not a big deal from what I can see. But once again, let me throw the disclaimer out there that I am not a lawyer and you should definitely go through this proprietary license with a fine tooth comb. Now, I wish that someone would actually have um, a license, an open source license that basically says, yeah, you can use this. You just can't turn it into your own product and take credit for it. And I imagine that's out there, but the part is they don't want it cut up and put into other game engines. And I can sort of understand that because otherwise someone could just create a central two, call it their own thing and off they went. And my, you know, my own ego would be annoyed by that anyways. Uh, but that is seemingly the intent behind that license. Just do be aware, it is a point of contention, something you should definitely know about. Uh, for the record, I have not gone into the source code. Uh, I will not go into the source code in the world that I exist in. This is way too poisonous of a license that I, this basically forbids me from ever touching the source code because I go through um, game engine source code all the time. I've submitted a couple of patches as I've gone through or given feedback or made small changes and I do not. I am not going to be bound or limited by that. So that essentially makes this kind of an off touch. I, I can't use this in any way. Now the nice thing is there actually are binaries as part of the archive. So you you probably don't even have to build it to take advantage of it. So yeah, that's it. That's the Essential game engine. Now it's open source, but not FOSS. So for people that really are distinguishing on the difference there, uh, the source code is available. It's under a proprietary license. It is not under a certified open source license. So do be aware of that. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, I have looked at Essential in the past. So if you're an wanting an idea of what their built-in IDE and coding experience looks like, it is there in this video. If you want to see the tools, in action, some of the previews and such they've got, the level and editing tools. I have covered all of those things, the essential editor in action uh, in this video, which I will of course link down below. Um, it's definitely worth your time, especially now that it's out here in open source. Um, it, it, it's, I, I don't know where I would go beyond that. Uh, it, if you are contributing to another open source project, unless that license is removed from the library, stay the hell away from this guy. Not that anything's ever actually going to come of it, but technically it, it's kind of like tying your hands on working on another open source project. So hopefully that gets cleaned up because I, I understand his intent there, but that really does, uh, for people that would potentially want to look at the source code of this engine, that that criteria there is is brutal. So uh, again, do be aware of that one up front, especially if you are working on other engines. But you know what, Essential might be one of those things that is worth checking out for you. Uh, I, the video I did for it probably is enough. It will probably give you a pretty good idea of what you're dealing with. Now, the nice thing with Essential though, is it's very general purpose in its support. So if you wanted to make like a top-down third-person RPG or an RTS or that, it, it's a good fit there. It's not a, um, you know, Unreal Engine has a very first 
third person shooter kind of vibe about it and anything else you're sort of fighting against that a little bit this is more of a general person purpose engine and it definitely feels that way anyways that is essential uh let me know what you think uh does it look interesting would you be willing to donate to help it out it looks like he's actually already got some donations going on in terms of 417 a month so um It'd be interesting to see if going through the donation model helps him out. Again, I hold back that trying to sell a game engine in this day and age is brutally impossible. You've got, you're, you're competing against Zenko uh, and Godot, and then of course you've got CryEngine out there, Unreal Engine, Unity. The number of free to start at the very least, or Lumberyard, which is free to use unless you need online multiplayer, or just completely free and open source options is just staggering. So I can understand, I think more and more of these proprietary, smaller commercial game engines are going to go donation based. And it'd be interesting to see if the communities can actually support them in that. So let me know what you think. Have you tried out a Senthal? Uh, what do you think of that license clause? Is that a point? and pill to you or do you just not care and uh yeah talk to you all in the comments down below see y'all later goodbye